this week, we give you the stories behind three of our favorite photos of the season. So in mid-April, we went up to Mount Hood Ski Bowl for the Poor Boys Super Park. It was Mr. Pete Alport's crazy idea to slide the cable jib. He told us about it the first day that we got up there. When he said cable jib, at first I was like, there's no way, this is another crazy Alport creation. And we went and checked it out. Once we looked at it and he showed us what he was thinking, it became a lot more legit in my mind. I thought we could do it once I saw it. And so that was my goal going into the shoot, was just to try and get an epic photo. The only gnarly part was how the cable was going to slide. If there's burrs in it, or if it's going to be way slippery, or if we were just going to get caught up on it. Spriggs ended up guinea pigging it, slid about four inches and fell off, and said that it was decently smooth, so we all started sending it. I was super nervous the first time I hit it, because I thought I was just going to stick, but it turned out really well. It was real smooth. By far the gnarliest part of it was the big drop. Every inch that you went out on the cable was another foot you had to drop to pretty much flat. I think Spriggs sent one like 25, 30 feet down the cable and probably dropped another 25 feet to flat. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Tudor did the sickest front six off I've ever seen. That was still crazy. It was funny, one time I got on and I just locked on too well and I ended up getting kind of stuck on top of the cable and went pretty far down it, scared myself and fell off to my face. I was super stoked when I saw Sayo's shot. Sayo was stoked? Yeah, you can never tell, but Sayo was stoked too, I think. I had just finished a free ride competition in Russia, flew home and got a phone call from the Levitation Project that the snow in Utah was just absolutely amazing. So I packed my bags, drove out to Utah. Will Wisman, Levitation Project, what more could you ask for? The very first morning, we woke up at 4 a.m. and knew that the day was just going to be amazing. Uh, we got out there as fast as we could, started hiking. Uh, next thing I know, I'm hiking for five hours, but it was so exciting because the snow was so good. I'm standing on top of my line and I can't avoid this thought that's going through my head that this is the first line that I'm skiing in front of the Levitation Project. I have got to nail this. the line the way I wanted to ski it and when it was all said and done everyone seemed to be pretty excited about it and I was really happy that I was able to nail my first line. Will's reaction to the shot was that it was pretty sweet and for Will who doesn't usually say a whole lot that meant a lot. Last March, I hooked up with Field Productions. We heard Lofoten Island had the best snow conditions in 10 years, so we figured that, yeah, let's go there. The Lofoten Island is a very unique place. It's, it's basically mountains and a couple of fishing towns in the inlets. And it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. The snow wasn't that good. It was rock hard, but we tried to be creative and one little tiny ski resort was kind enough to help us with uh, some machine time. So we got this snow cone built and started to session that with some hand plants and jibs. One of the skiers on this trip was uh, Christopher Frankham, a young, talented rider from Norway. Christopher always makes his hand plants really different. And I was really stoked because we had this epic backdrop and the snow just sucked, we couldn't really do any jumping at all. Pretty stoked, because I knew that, okay, that, that's gonna go somewhere. And uh, now I guess this is the Solomon ad. <laughs> I used to be surprised when I got a really good shot out of bad snow conditions, but not anymore. Because with the, with the right crew, some creativity and, and an epic backdrop, you could, you could make things happen anyway. On the next episode of Free Ski TV, we explore the life of a ski bum living in Whistler. By the time I was 14, I knew that I'd be moving here the day I graduated high school. It's just something I've always known since I was a kid. 